Hello everyone, here we are for the second episode of this uh, movie series uh, uh, Jazz Saxophone versus Classical Saxophone. <coughs> Today I have the privilege to be at the house of a uh, saxophone player, I'm sure you know him, it's Marcus Weiss. Uh, he is a one of the probably internationally uh, most known saxophone players for his contribution to contemporary music, for his uh, many, uh, the many composers who wrote for, me, for him with different groups, uh, with saxophone quartet, with the famous trio, which they did, I think, uh, about 85. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's uh, many, many uh, first performances. <coughs> uh, he's really a working horse, I would say. And we know each other, I think, since uh, we just calculated 38 years, where he came uh, to see me to have saxophone lessons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, uh, and so that's uh, we, after we played also together quartet, uh, uh, here I am at his house. And I would like him now to tell us a little bit about uh, his vision of how is the relation from the classical saxophone to the jazz saxophone and how this all could develop. Uh, because we both agree that we are actually, for the moment, at a, at a no place. Because you cannot, will, uh, as a saxophone player, will no, not be able to make a career playing Glazunov and Jack Iber all your life. So there has to be an uh, alternative. And in, in this, is of course, in this contemporary music, there is the uh, connection. Uh, to integrate jazz, that these both walls come together, they could, in my opinion, contribute much to make the instrument uh, uh, more present in the music world. So now I would like to give mm -hmm. the word to Marcus. <coughs> yes, I, <coughs> uh, I think see, seeing it from the middle of being a player and being a teacher and observing what happens in the classic saxophone world. I am quite happy because I think it is a very rich world. There are many, many different profiles of being a classical saxophone player or I think also of being a jazz saxophone player. Uh, I mean, to earn money or to make a life being a player <laughs> is another story. Mm -hmm. uh, make a living is difficult uh, maybe with playing, so we all, most of us also do teach. Mm -hmm. But I would, I would somehow uh, make a big question mark of what is a jazz player, because jazz has developed into many directions. There is still jazz like as a classic uh, form, like as a, as a historic form of, of music with, uh, with the, the, the famous standards, American, Great American Songbook, and but there are other many other forms of jazz. There are also very extreme forms of what you could somehow say it's jazz because it's improvised music that goes from Coltrane uh, through Eric Dolphy, Ornette Coleman to to other forms, uh, and in the classic world it's the same. I see uh, there is not only one profile. It's a very difficult difficult to grasp somehow in the general teaching world of classical saxophone you do your etudes and then in the end you have your solo diploma and then you are the soloist and that doesn't just doesn't exist we we, we all know that very few uh, do play with orchestra but what i see from teaching and from my own perspective is that there are many many different ways of being a classical so-called saxophone player I have former students, they, they do quartet, of course, there are, the quartet culture has, has gone up a lot and even the quartet, uh, the quartets, they play different uh, types of music. There is not actually the classic 
quartet literature is not uh, is not in the center at all anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe some few pieces. Then there are people they do chamber other chamber groups. There is a large possibility. There are large possibilities to be a contemporary saxophone player um, in ensembles, small chamber ensembles, like as you said before, mm -hmm. I do with piano percussion, for example. Mm -hmm. Extending the playing techniques of every instrument, he doesn't see the normal, because there is no normal. The normal also was not normal before, before, before. So in uh, the, the romantic way of playing the instrument, didn't exist in the classic period and the classic way didn't exist in the Baroque period. There was always a development of the sound of the instruments and so on. And uh, the extended techniques are nothing else but an, ex uh, an extension of what the instrument can do. In a it's new language. You know. A new language and uh, if you take like the romantic and post-romantic music, the only thing I would say is extended techniques Flutter tongue is probably the most uh, modern thing that didn't exist really before. That that uh, that was one part of this extension. And that came actually from from rock and roll. Yeah, I mean <laughs> that that came. Yeah, you know, it it was there with with uh, with uh, Pierre Lunaire in in the the the, the, the ah, Schoenberg, the, yeah. Schoenberg and the, the the Viennese they had it. But um, if you say Kurtak. Kurtak is, is really a contemporary composer, but his language comes from 19th century plus Weber, plus a very, very intense, uh, a very big knowledge of what uh, tradition yes, is. Yes, but there, there is still some composers, I mean, who uh, do, uh, uh, do not absolutely yes. necessarily use these extensive yeah. techniques but uh, are inspired more, yeah, yeah. Uh, like uh, John Adams, maybe yes. from uh, minimal jazz yes. music, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and they actually uh, don't really use, but they're also, uh, I mean, we here we're not going to uh, give some uh, values, no, yes, we, yeah. we, uh, this is not the uh, purpose of uh, this video, it's the purpose of videos, of this video is to uh, show all mm -hmm. the kind of uh, uh, development yeah. which are absolutely necessary because uh, uh, ye yesterday actually we had dinner together and we listened to jazz. Yes, <laughs> that means Marcus is uh, like me, also a jazz fan. <laughs> it's true, one, one of my very big <laughs> and teachers. Actually, when you came for the first time before you had a jazz teacher, yeah, my first okay. teacher, was uh, a jazz on teacher. and uh, okay, very good, yeah, yeah. One, uh, and uh, uh, so. Uh, the, this, uh, I think this synthesis of, uh, because the saxophone is such a verse, in my opinion, it's mm -hmm. such a versatile instrument, you can so yeah. do many things and you can do, the problem is when there is a, you have some things which there so many possibilities in us, it's also very easy to misuse. Mm -hmm. That means you really can with this extended techniques just do uh, organized noise, yeah, sure. but you can do good music also. Exactly. Uh, so, and sometimes uh, I think it's necessary just uh, for people like you who do really do that very seriously to educate the people to make the difference mm -hmm. because uh, often, because it's not so easy sometimes yeah. to make the difference and uh, you have to go really in and also that uh, uh, little by little, the people, the public, can hear the difference. Yeah. That is yeah, I, important. I think the, the one one possibility to enter into into this field of, of, of listening also, and it's really a new way, or not a new, but a, an extended way of listening, is also uh, going through, uh, maybe on one hand side, expose yourself to music that is not meant to tell you a story. I mean, if you want to hear a story, uh, then somehow the music will be post, uh, post romantic or post classic, however you, you said it. But mm. uh, there is a lot of music in the 20th century. I mean, John Cage is the very example for it, but there is so many other things also uh, today or since 40 years, improvisation, free improvisation where it's really about listening to sound and to sounds and to energy and, uh, and 
that be can become a language, but it doesn't tell you a story with mm. notes. And I think there the problem, let's say, I would say bad contemporary music, if you want, is somebody that tells you a story and then puts a multiphonic and then a slap here and there, then it's uh, some kind of ridiculous. It's the importing effects, trying to be mm -hmm. modern or, or contemporary. But if you start from the sounds, if the composer or the improviser starts from the sounds, like a, a builder, a sculpture, he has a stone in front of mm -hmm. himself. And then he has the idea to form this stone. He will do different things uh, with wood. Mm -hmm. If he had wood, he would have to do other movements, other form, other shapes, because the material itself has another quality. Mm -hmm. So the improviser who improvises, improvises with multiphonics, like with scales, he's kind of wrong, because multiphonic is not a, a note inside of a scale. You can maybe make it like that, but uh, I think the material, the musical material, and the way of treating and working with it has changed mm -hmm. in contemporary music. And also there I see a very a closeness to jazz, maybe not jazz like mm -hmm. standard playing, because that is, crit, that is it's like Baroque music, it has developed to a very high level and you can... The, the difference, I would say, that between the jazz saxophone player, the, which we hear in the beginning and the ending of, of this video, is that there is, in the background, even if it's nearly uh, not so uh, consciously present, but mm -hmm. there is a strong pulsation. And uh, uh, pulsation is always in Bach, in, in all some things mm -hmm. who uh, did uh, uh, make the people uh, pulsation gets to the people because life mm -hmm. is pulsation and uh, when a music is uh, uh, just sounds in the mm -hmm. room that means like a picture mm -hmm. so, uh, then I'm I would be interested uh, has no this pulsation development mm -hmm. development because pulsation is is always a beginning and an end mm -hmm. and uh, if uh, it uh, if this is not present, I'm wondering if how it's gonna go really to other people. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 